This describes the whole thing. 8 through 21. We don't have to go through the whole thing. But then we, 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 we can see the whole description here. Okay, then if you go to 14. Uh, well, let's try another one. 16, 24. That wasn't the best example. I don't have time to look for that scripture. I'm not going to. It's too big a chapter. 16.24 And he shall wash his flesh, talking about the Yom Kippur atonement, put on his garments, talking about Aaron, coming forth, and after the burnt offering, and the burnt offering of the people, and shall make a atonement for himself and for the people. Okay, now wherever you see that word in English, burnt offering, listen, the English, or elevation offering, the English, the English, the, the, I'm sorry, the Hebrew is actually Ola, Ola, mistranslated, key word, mistranslated as burnt offering. Is it a burnt offering? Yes. But a better definition is in Ola, the Hebrew is Ola, write it down, Ola, not Ole, Ola, uh, literally mean an elevation offering, an, an offering that goes up. An elevation offering. So the burnt offering was an elevation offering, an Ola, that went up. So Wilbur, wherever you see those words, burnt offering, mm -hmm. in the Hebrew it is Ola. O L A H. Now what is now what can be done given as an Ola? Now why are we talking about sacrifices today? Because I just talked about worship for four weeks. So now that we understand what worship is, there are different kinds of worship. There are different kinds of gifts that we can give to Yahweh that were prescribed for us in the Tanakh and in the Torah, in the old, old there I go, first covenant. So an Olah can be a bull, as we just read, or it could be a ram, or it could be a male bird, as done in the case of the Tsara, the leper, in the case of Tsara, leprosy. It could be a male bird, a dove, or two young pigeons, or young pigeons, for the poor who could not afford a ram or a bull. Yahweh would accept a dove or a, a pigeon or pigeons that were to be wholly consumed, but the basic underlying requirement is that they be without defect. Okay? Without defect. Sometime an Ola could be a ram, it could be a bull, it could be a pigeon, but the underlying point is, Daryl, it had to be what? Without blemish, without defect. So write that down. Those were the elements. They could vary, but they had the commonality that they could have. They must have no defect. Now, what was the purpose of the Ola? Yahweh gave all these ordinances, these sacrifices. What was the purpose of the Ola? Was the Ola a korban? Vladimir, was the Ola a korban? Yeah. How many korbanot do we find in Torah? Five. Every single korban that can be categorized in Torah can be categorized in five korbanot, five books of Moshe, five books of Torah, five. Okay? The purpose of the Olah, listen, it was a voluntary act of worship. The person was not under compulsion to obey Yahweh. Isn't that what worship is all about? We do it voluntarily, not out of compulsion. Amen. All the requirements for a burnt offering, the worshiper could have said, yet, mm -hmm. no. No chvei de Jose. It was voluntary. Often the purpose was for an atonement, for unintentional sin, in general, except Yom Kippur. Then the Ola was for intentional sin. Generally, it was a voluntary atonement offering for unintentional sin that had no defect. It was an expression of the worshiper's devotion and commitment to offer a complete surrender to Yahweh. Why? Because it wasn't required. If it wasn't required, it was indicative of an expression on behalf of the worshiper to be totally devoted, committed in a complete surrender to Yahweh, somebody. 
So did anyone have to give an Ola? No. They chose to give an Ola. It was an, a, an offering, a gift to Yahweh. But what happens if they would have taken the Ola for Yahweh and given it to their parents? They'd be stealing from Yahweh. The same way those clowns were taking the Korban, the gift from their parents, and giving it to Yahweh, stealing. You see? Their heart was not in the right place. So, it indicated one's complete surrender to Yahweh. What was Yahweh's portion of the Ola, the elevation offering, Ola? Why was it called the Ola and not the burnt offering? It's translated as burnt offering, but it's literally the elevation offering. Is that because it went up to Yahweh in an elevator? No. Why was it called the elevation offering? Because the burnt, the sweet aroma of the smell went up, 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 up into Yahweh's what? Nostrils. Nostrils, and it was acceptable as an act of surrender and devotion. What was Yahweh's portion of the Olah? How much, what percentage of the Olah, Wilbur, did Yahweh receive? Ten. Ten percent? Mm -hmm. The legs, the, the, what, the eyes? Was Yahweh into the nose? Was he a nose man, breg man, breast man, leg man? <laughs> What part did Yahweh get? The fat. Okay. The answer is the entire animal. But he gave to Levine. Yahweh got the entire offering. What about the skin of the Olah? What, what was done with the skin of the Olah when it was cut? It was to be sold. What did the worshiper retain of the Ola? The one who brought the bull or the pigeon to the priest, to the Kohen. What did they retain from the Ola? What did they go home with? Nothing. You get the point? That's what worship is. To give everything voluntarily to Yahweh. Not to steal from someone else to give to Yahweh or to, or to, or to steal from Yahweh to give to someone else. Okay. The priest, um, Yahweh received the entire animal. Okay, period. Now, the second kind of korban we want to talk about is the grain offering. I hope you're taking notes. So the point is the worshiper came fully loaded <laughs> and left what? Empty-handed. That's the way you should feel when you come in here. When we worship Yahweh, just lay it on the line, weeping and crying and, and seeking and pleading and petitioning and going home feeling, oh man, are you tired? Yeah, but you didn't go to work. That's true, but so why are you that, you know, why are you that drained? Because I was in the presence, I was in the presence, and I was petitioning, and I was seeking, and I was looking, and I was, and I was seeking Yahweh's will and purpose, and I wanted to hear his voice and his direction and his counsel for my life. Amen. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. amen? That was a good amen, Seth. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Tell your friends we're on the air live. We're on the air live. This is not a tape. This is not Ella Fitzgerald. This is live. <laughs> Number two, grain offering. The Hebrew word where we see a grain or a terrible translation. I mean, just the worst translations you've ever seen in your life. It can confuse a, a night guard. Okay? They call it a meat, a meal offering. You ever read your old King James? Give gold a meal offering. Meal? Is it, Father, do you like three, you like three pancakes or five? <laughs> with strawberries or without with a meal offering like Yahweh's hungry you know you know like Yahweh's papa is Colonel Sanders or something and he needs to eat his own chicken all right whenever you see the word grain offering as the second kind of korban the Hebrew word is mincha which literally means a, a, a grain offering, a flour offering, grain or flour. Write it down. Mincha. Where we get the Hebrew prayer, the midday prayer, Mincha. So there are three prayers in the Hebrew day. Shachrit, 